The default mode network plays a fundamental role in the formation of mental constructs. Mental constructs can be thought of as shortcuts that help us more efficiently navigate the world around us. They save the brain energy. This is the role of the default mode network, to save the brain energy by creating mental constructs. For example, let's consider a tree. We've probably all seen thousands of trees. We know that trees pose no threat to us, and we know that they likely won't be used as a tool. And for all intents and purposes, most of us feel that nearly all trees are similar, interchangeable. To know that it's a tree, we do not have to analyze the bark, the leaves, the branches, the shadows, the mold. If we did have to analyze these things, this would require a lot of brain power. So instead, in order to save processing power, the moment our brains recognize that this thing we're looking at is a tree, our brains create a mental construct of a tree. We don't have to see the bark. We don't have to see the branches. It's a tree. This is a thing we all know. And this is the work of the default mode network. And this does save the brain quite a lot of energy, but it also limits the brain's ability to recognize and perceive the depth of reality around us because we're only ever focusing on these mental constructs. So when children see a tree for the first several times, they haven't yet had the chance to develop a mental construct of tree. And they therefore see many, many more details of the tree than adults do. So the experience that adults have of looking at a tree is just fundamentally different than the experience that children have when they see trees for the first time. The default mode network is referred to by some neuroscientists as the me network. This is because the default mode network plays a role in the construction of mental constructs, including the mental construct we call the self or the ego. 